Hi there and welcome to episode 5 of the Field Sports Channel podcast. Oh, it feels good to be back in your ears again. We're trying our best to keep these as regular as possible, and it is my mission to make sure that that is indeed the case. Um, we recorded a ton of stuff, lots of material at the stage from the Game Fair Theatre, which I'm planning to sort of compile and put together and make them for you. So please do keep an eye and an ear out for those. But first, I just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank all of you guys, not only for just listening and watching these podcasts, but everything that we do on the Field Sports channel. And if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here doing it. If you like what we do so much, then could I ask you to do me a favour? If you could go out and tell somebody about not only Field Sports Channel, but also about these podcasts, that would be good. Even if it's just one person. Or in fact, just stop what you're doing for two seconds. If you listen to this on the phone, just screen grab your phone right now and tweet it out if you've got a Twitter account or stick it on Facebook or something like that. And if you hashtag it, Field Sports Podcast, then we'll keep an eye out for all of those people that have shared it. And you never know, we might thrust some goodies through your letterbox. And they will be goodies, not weird surprises. Mm, don't know, depends on who's posting it. But anyway, segue straight to letting me say, have you heard that we sell our own Field Sports Channel merchandise on our shop and our website. If you haven't already, then pop over to fieldsportschannel.tv forward slash shop and you can buy yourself some very fetching apparel that you can wear out in the field, down the pub, whilst you're working, impress people up in town, you know, all those sort of things wherever you want to go. But they are the finest quality garments that you can get with some surprisingly good comedic and uh, very well thought out designs on the front of them so please do pop over there and have a look and whilst you're flitting around the website then uh, you could also check out how to become a part of the field sports nation so check out our share page over there as well but anyway enough of me gabbing on guns on planes let's talk about that Right, Mr. Pilbeam, we're in the fortunate position in that we, we do travel a bit by plane to various destinations and we come across lots of different situations in airports. Um, some are good, some are not so good, um, but what we're going to try and do is just maybe help people if they are thinking about travelling abroad, what they need to think about and some of the situations that we've found ourselves in. So let's deal with the one that we've dealt with most recently, which is Portugal. So, oh, yes, yes. so we arrive at Luton, Luton Airport. Airport. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Luton Airport, and um, and we're flying to to Lisbon in Portugal. So, what have you? What kit have you got with you, and how have you packed it? And then what happens when we meet? Uh, we go to the desk. Okay, so we're, we're flying with EasyJet. So normally, despite what the website says, do never, never ever believe what's on the website. And we had that experience before. Is <clears throat> EasyJet say that the ammunition sh can be kept with the rifle, but from experience before, they don't allow it. So my 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 view was: I'll tell you what I do. I've got my uh, firearms case and I've got my ammunition in my luggage, and if I if I can put them together, I can do at the at the desk. So that's the option I gave myself, as opposed to uh, having to unwrap my rifle you know, amongst other people and all that type of stuff. So I went for that option for a start. But so also it's possibly a cheaper option because if it's a second firearm and the, the ammunition box is separate, that would incur another cost. That's right, because the ammunition is treated as a firearm, so you have two boxes. So I thought, yeah, okay. So we kept the options open. So we, so we go to Luton Airport and we met this lovely chap who knew everything about firearms. He was fully trained. So we thought, <laughs> yes, we've got a man. So we didn't let him go, did we? He's right, he's like, you're not going very far. <laughs> I know it wasn't very busy, but we just kind of thought, great, this is going to be really cool. And he was very relaxed about it, wasn't he? And he said, yes, if you want to, you can put the ammunition with the firearm. We go, really? And I was going, really? <laughs> Eyebrows he was like, really? And he said, yeah. Um, but I think the I think the package you you the, the tickets you had bought actually didn't having the the firearm in a separate um, bag there was no extra cost is that right? So yeah, I mean the thing is with EasyJet when you book a firearm it actually says you're taking your sports sports equipment with you and you've got skis whatever yeah. but so you can actually so they know but with other airlines which we'll talk about in a minute mm. 
that option isn't available. So you arrive, and, and I don't know what information EasyJet then gleaned from that, whether they flagged that up to their staff that someone's going to be arriving on the Lisbon flight with but, but a firearm. We, we, yeah, but we registered in the way, we? So it's registered yeah. on it to, yeah, yeah. A, to a certain extent. But he said, it was, it was really, because it's really a relief when you get someone like that says, yes, I know what we're doing. So here's the paperwork. You've got to fill this in. Have you got all the relevant stuff for us? And then he said, you know, he'd even done, he'd, he'd worked with Emirates before he'd worked with EasyJet, yeah. done the course. The course is like a three grand course or something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't worry, chaps, you're safe with me. Yeah. But then he says something like, yeah, you can put your ammo in your rifle case and both our sets of eyebrows rise because that's never really, every time we've gone to EasyJet, Yes, it's always has to be. And it's on the, on the website, as you say, it says yeah. that. Yeah. So, explain yeah, what happened. That's right. So, therefore, great. So, put the uh, ammunition in my luggage. And I thought that perhaps ammunition, if it's, you know, it's, it's treated as, as firearms. So, normally, if you put it in luggage, both the firearm and the luggage are treated, has, have a firearms ticket on, and they are treated separate. But on this occasion, which is quite unusual, rightly or wrongly, we shan't go there. But the, he just, we, so the, the, the ammunition was in the baggage. And he put the ticket on it, and off it went. I'm going, right, well, that's kind of firearms in there. But he said, no, no, it's, 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 it's ammunition, so don't worry about it. Yeah, so he went off. Your yeah. hold luggage, so with all your pants and your bra yeah. and everything else, yeah, went, in <laughs> went in there, <laughs> went in there without any firearms uh, markings at all. No, just went as normal luggage. But the security girl, when we spoke to her, she was, when we said about, oh, we thought possibly just mm. playing a little bit of a, a game that we could put the ammunition in with a rifle. And she went, oh my goodness, yeah, can't do no that. way. Yeah. And we'd, I, to be honest, I didn't even clock the expression on, that, on the guy's face who said that was no problem. Yeah. But, yeah. So I think the, 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 the lesson there is, it's very, very hard to know who to trust. Yes. No matter what airline it is. Yes. Some people think they do, and they know what to do, and they don't. And if it was easier, perhaps a smaller airline, smaller airport, it's easier for them. But if you go to Gatwick or Heathrow, you know, uh, one of the things on my list of things to, to bear in mind is leave plenty of time because it can take you half an hour, maybe an hour, to actually find somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about or if they, they, they actually do know what they're talking about. They think they do, but they don't. Mm. Because in the bigger airports, I think that what it is, there's two processes. The airline will fill in their forms to make sure that their process is done properly. But it's a completely separate process when it comes to the customs and the and the actual legal side of things. So they, there's two parts of that in some ways. EasyJet seems to do a whole lot themselves in some ways, but in in BA or or um, T5 or Gatwick, you know, you go through one process. They you, they do their paperwork right. That's what's in there, no problem at all. And then they hand that over to a third party, which is in this case is G4S for T5, and they will take on that form and they process it through. At a cost. At a cost. At a hell of a cost. I mean, this, well. is, this is one thing. I mean, certainly with EasyJet, there doesn't seem to be any additional costs. You, you may or may not, depending on who you get, have to pay for an additional firearms set of baggage going through. But it seems to be 120 quid here, another 140 quid here with BA. It's just, you've got to be prepared for it. I mean, yeah. I'll talk about the flight that I had to, that was ending up in Port Elizabeth, but there was an internal flight between Joburg and Port Elizabeth. So we fly from T5 with Paul and his friend, and we leave T5, go to Joburg. We arrive at Heathrow having tried to contact BA and tell them and inform them, as it says on the website, yeah. 72 hours beforehand that we have a rifle. I tried half a dozen times. It went. It doesn't, it doesn't put you on hold. It just drops you a call. Mm. It, they say, uh, we're busy, thanks very much, and it's gone. Mm. And it's very, very, very frustrating. So as well as trying to get all the kit ready and everything else, I'm trying to sort this firearm to be registered on the BA flight. When I get through to somebody, I phone first thing in the morning, they say, can you see the website? I said, yes, I can. Can you read the website? Yes, I can. He said, that's fine. That's all you can do. And I was like, well, it says here you need to speak to someone and tell someone, can I speak to someone? Mm. And he said, no. It's like, right, okay. So I knew, I knew that I was, you know, There's a problem that I was going to be playing with some interesting <laughs> conversations at, um, or having some interesting conversations at T5. And when I checked in or Paul was checking in, a desk away from me. I could see him waving at me and I was thinking, oh God, do I really want to go over? You're on your own, boys. But I went over and they said it's you, not... Because you, 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 you were one desk and Paul... Yeah, yeah, completely. Joe, he was on another desk. Completely, yeah. yeah so I was, I, we'd arrived at dif different times, yes. so he was, he was going through the motions. I mean, Paul's travelled a lot mm. abroad as well, so he knows the ins and outs and what we have to deal with. But G4S was saying that it couldn't go on the flight. The flight was, you know, it was not registered on the flight, therefore it couldn't go. And then I was thinking, oh my goodness, this is a lot of work going into organising this, and it's all gone 
Pete Tong right at the last minute. So eventually G4S said that they would take the, the rifle and that's 120 quid. Um, so off it goes. So we then go through the process of going through the... Um, and was, there, was the ammunition with the rifle or was that separate? Ammunition was separate. Separate, separate. yeah, South Africa. That's the other thing, different, different destinations have different rules. Yeah? Yeah. So South Africa, for instance, you have to have them separate. That's one of the... So there'd be no, there'd be no question mm. over that. So the issue there, so okay, we pay the money, he's going through the process. I think there might have been some additional luggage bought as well. I can't remember, to be honest. Mm. But then we go through the system, it goes through the x-ray. Um, Paul asks if he can take a picture of the x-ray and they say no. Although you'd be naughty and you're taking it. <laughs> but the interesting thing that happened there is that we were traveling with someone that was the first time abroad shooting. He thought the safest thing would be to actually remove the bolt from the rifle from its locked case. So he put the bolt in his hand luggage. Now, we didn't know he'd done this. So we go through uh, security. Everything seems to be going fine, tickety-boo. It obviously picks up on the x-ray as we're going through and he's pulled aside. What is this, sir? What is this, sir? Um, <laughs> I'm surprised they knew what it was. Did they, did they know what it was? I think they do. <laughs> it's a bolt from a rifle, sir. Where's your rifle, sir? Well, it's going through. Right, okay, you, you, your, your rifle has to be intact. That bolt has to be with that firearm. Okay, I'm new to this. Haven't done it before. Oops. Right, we're going to have to call the police. So T5 police rock up with all their bells and whistles on. They say... You've done absolutely the right thing, sir. Your bolt is separate from your rifle. And the airline are going, or the, the ground staff are going, well, uh, he, uh, uh. well he, he can't go on the flight with the, the, with the bolt in his hand luggage. It's just a chunk of metal. But, so we had, that delayed us for an hour. And we were last on our plane wow. because the rifle did end up with the bolt inside it and going on the BA flight, but there was a lot of conversations going on and it was like how can the police be thinking one thing and the airline staff something completely different you know when you travel with a rifle typically you would take the bolt out or I mean on that point actually I mean um, um, in, in um, just got back from Portugal and also from Argentina is that in those countries the bolt cannot be with a rifle if you're traveling around so therefore you, you, know, you know this is actually in the country they, yeah, they'll yeah, find yeah, they'll yeah. find you straight away yeah, yeah, yeah. so and also in, the, in, in this in this country as well is actually so therefore when you when you go to the airport you really should have that bolt in a separate container or away from the rifle so you so what I do now is I go to the airport with with the, with the bolt separate to the rifle and when I start going through the security checks, okay. when they will individually check the numbers, because one of the things they will do is check the numbers going in, going out and coming in. So what I do is actually I've got, when they start checking the rifle, I'll say, oh, this is the bolt, and I'm going to slip it in there. So therefore, I've done my bit. So therefore, it's separate going into the airport, which you should be doing anyway. And then when I'm actually security, I'll actually <laughs> slip it into the airport. But if you forget... It's a lot to, it's it's a a lot, lot to remember. It, there's, there's an awful lot to remember, because you know, you've got to bear in mind that you know, if you're going to South Africa, or, or in my case, Argentina, is you know, the, the requirements are slightly different. If you're going to Portugal, you need the EFP, your firearms certificate, your, 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 your EFP, your Euro European firearms permit. So you've got all those to check as well, and, and the airport will be the, 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 the airline yeah, EasyJet, the provider, will be checking those as well for you. Then you go to the next stage. So you've got to be really quite cute. <laughs> Talking about checking, so we will tend to use relatively new models of rifles. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so this happened to you and it's happened yeah, to Paul. Yeah, yeah. So Paul's coming in with a, a brand new, the, the Carbon Wolf Sacco that we took to our Africa. You were bringing this Diamanica in yes. and the 2018 models, when they're checked off back at Heathrow or wherever it is, and they're going through their catalogue, which is 2017, they will not find it. And they don't like not finding yes, it. Right. Yes. So, yeah. um, and certainly in Paul's case, he said, well, look on the website and you'll see the rifle there. Yeah. And because of the firewall systems at Heathrow, you can't look at firearms. <laughs> so he had to Google it on his phone <laughs> to then show them that that was a relevant model yeah. and that actually did exist in this country. And I was lucky with my star man, because I was about to do the same thing. He says, has he got SM12, the new model, on the, on the, on the actual? Went, yes, he went, great, great, go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you are right. I mean, we go, we go back. Going into through T five, the handling charges, for instance, you know, EasyJet, it's it's a sport luggage, That's therefore sixty quid, 60 quid yeah. fine. BA is one hundred and twenty pounds for the firearm, but if the ammunition is separate to the firearm, 
it's two lots of, so therefore it's your two forearms, so it's two lots of 120, mm. yeah? But those two firearms are treated as your first, uh, first baggages. So therefore, you, so if you, you're like me, I was going to Argentina, I got two firearms and I got two big bags because I was filming out there, all my kits, I had a lot of stuff with me. So I had um, a, a, one, a two lots of 120 charge, right? But I had two other big bags. Well, the second bag is 65, okay, that's great. The, the fourth bag is 140 quid. I haven't given you the bill yet. No, no. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so it's like, hang on, guys, this is ridiculous. Oh, well, that's, well, you know, that's how much it costs. And so, therefore, what people are saying is, is I've heard from, on the internet and from Facebook, people are not going through London. They prefer to go via Paris or somewhere else to go abroad because London's getting so, so bad, or BA especially, are charging an absolute fortune for... So it's perhaps when you are going abroad, if you're, if you're hunting abroad... Just check, you know, just check different ways of going to maybe South Africa or Argentina because the firearms could cost you four or five hundred quid, and then you've got to come back. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So just yeah, be yeah, yeah. very, very careful, yeah. and that's the problem uh, I had, you know. So. Yeah, and, and staying with the South Africa. So the situation. Mm, <laughs> so oh, once yes. we got the bolt yes. situation, <laughs> we were told by the G4S guys that the Com Air flight, which is the connecting flight, which is a BA associated, wouldn't take the firearms. So we arrive in Joburg. And this is, sorry, this is the other thing, is that Paul, knowing that the problems we'd had, or problems he'd had uh, collectively as, you know, taking rifles, had organised a middleman called Mr X. Now, he thought Mr X meant, you know, we don't know who's going to turn up. It might be Mr Smith or Mr Jones, but he said that his name was Mr X. So it was just like, oh, God, this is a bit weird. But anyway, Mr X turns up and he was like, well, no, you're not going to get in the Comair flight. And it's like, well... What are we going to do? So I tried to speak to three different BA desks in order to sort this out. None of them would actually deal with it. So I had to speak to someone on the phone. So I was using my mobile and the call got dropped four times. So I then said, Listen, I'd asked the guy whether I could use his phone, this one desk that would actually talk to us. And initially he refused. And then he could see that I was getting really quite frustrated. So he let me use the phone. But 45 minutes later, I'd spoken because the problem was, if, I'd, if we'd just not got on that flight, then hadn't and hadn't cancelled the return flight from Port Elizabeth to Joburg to then pick up the BA flight. That would have basically seen us as in, invalid passengers. So we wouldn't have got home. So what I had to do was sack all the Com Air flights off and then make sure that we pick up the flight at Joburg. Sorry, it's getting com- yeah, 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 confusing. Yeah. But we, I then had to book our trip from Joburg to Port Elizabeth and back again to Joburg via South African Airlines who take firearms. So that was an additional, what, 400, 500 quid in order to do that. But that was down to, I mean, that, and it, actually that's probably my mistake because I think it did say, it does say something about Comair um, latterly down on the, um, or check Comair's um, firearms travel arrangements independently. No, I think a lot of these countries, I mean, if you are travelling abroad, generally you may have a fixer or a local outfitter or agent on the other end who yes. should be able to advise you. But yes. yes, be very careful internal flights. In Argentina last year, I was in golf travelling. I couldn't travel because I had a firearm on me. Didn't think about that. Right. Okay. Fine. So I couldn't travel internally on the pl- on the planes. Yes. So just be very but careful. Internal flights. A bit cheesed yeah. off because Mr. Yeah. X cost a hundred dollars. I mean, fair play. He was there when we arrived, and he was there when we actually departed. However, he knew the flight details. It would have been really sensible for him, you know, whatever. I think we Paul might have booked his services fortnight before to say, hold on, guys, you've got to think about this mm. because you're you're it says here you're flying from Comair, but he didn't. No. So you know, you have a fixer there, but he didn't. He was looking at sorting out. His end, but wasn't actually thinking about the, the full, the full journey. But you know, these um, these things happen. I've actually written to to BA, but certainly because if maybe I'd had a conversation with them before we'd left, then mm. it would have become clearer about the firearm situation and the pickup from with Comair. But you're right. I think you almost have to find alternative when you're talking about travelling via else via Frankfurt or whatever. Mm. Then how do you get there in the first? Place? I, I don't know. I just I speak spoke to people like Paul Hill from Carinium um, Rifle Range. And he takes a lot of people abroad, and he's saying that now he's taking a lot of his customers via maybe Paris or Frankfurt because it's easier, it's cheaper as well, a lot, lot cheaper. So a lot of people aren't going via Heathrow or Gatwick anymore. So it's an option. So I think what you need to do is just just check your options. And I think if you are going once again, I think perhaps this fortifies the reasoning why actually you, you probably sometimes <laughs> you, you may pay more, but go with an outfitter who knows. Because that if you if you get that wrong. If you get that, 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 that process wrong in the UK, 
it's going to get a lot, lot worse when you get abroad. And so therefore, when I travel out, I'm absolutely paranoid. I'm just watching every single, because I know that that's got to go there. That's got to go there. That's mine. Give it to me now. You know, I mean, you've got boarding passes. You've got FACs, e EFPs. You've got, um, you've got, you may have permits. You, I don't know if you, I did, Paul had a permit for South Africa. I had to go to London to get a permit for uh, Argentina to be allowed to take a temporary firearm into, into the country. So I need to do that. And when you get to the other side, I can, you can guarantee one thing: they will what they will what they will read every single word in this because they have to get it right. Because they, they we're pretty yes. relaxed this end. Go to the other end. Oh my goodness! You get one thing wrong, and that's it. So when you're talking about the other side, mm. some people don't give a monkey's. I mean, we've had situations where the case doesn't be up. Certainly in Joburg, um, they weren't interested, no. and in Port Elizabeth, mm. not in. Yeah, you know, I, I think I know what it is. It's, it's perhaps because you know it, it's based in South Africa and also in Argentina. You you are up against the you know with with Argentina, for instance. You have got the firearms. The, you got the um, you got the firearms guys, and you also got the customs guys. Completely different organisations. So you had to go through the the firearms department for a start, and they just choo -choo -choo, and and it's manana. It's just they do it on their own time. You can't you cannot rush them. You cannot rush them. You sit there going, right, I, I can see my guys waiting from the other side there, and two hours later on, he's still waiting for them. And it's just, just the way it is. But that paperwork is so, so important, because one thing wrong, because also you've got a language issue as well. You know, especially in Argentina, they, a lot of them do not speak um, um, English. And so if you haven't got your fixer or your outfitter or, or agent the other side, phew, that's quite tough. So once again... And more and more people are independent travelling. You know, they, the, the they thing are, is, exactly a lot right. of the stuff we've done mm. has been relationships forged on Facebook. Yeah. And so they're not professional outfitters, they're just friends who might have some, yeah. some permissions that you, you go over and hunt in. So, right. so, that, so I think that research is vitally yeah. important. So I did, when, when we went to Archie for the first time last year, I did a lot of research. Can you take firearms in? What's involved? And a lot of times, actually, to be fair, I mean, for us, we're sponsored by firearms companies, so therefore we will take our own firearm. I think seems to be what's happening nowadays. Most people say it's not worth the hassle. Just get out there. I mean, for us, we use firearms all the time, so we're used to using other people's firearms. But actually, I can see why people do not want to use other people's firearms. But it's, you know, you haven't got the cost of going out there with with them, and also when you, uh, they haven't got the red tape and everything else. Just get out there. They provide you the rifle. Have a go. Have a practice for a few shots, and get on out there. That's why they do it. But for us. We, can't, we haven't got the option, <laughs> have we at all? No. You know. And it's very rare that we can pick up a, a manufacturer's um, rifle in mm. situ. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's probably it, on the other end. It's, yeah, we've, yeah, yeah. One of the other situations I had when I went to Hungary was that Paul was with, we were hunting mouflon, and he had a group of guys going out there to shoot pigs for mouflon. And um, that was EasyJet flight. So we arrived, rifles came off, ammunition stayed on the plane and went back to Stansted. So Gosh. you have a dozen guys uh, with no bullets. So if you are bringing your own rifle out, the guy that we were with, the outfitter, had some 308 and he had some 270. If you've got something slightly peculiar, uh, because then we went to a, a gun shop and, and bought some rounds, again, limited as to what you could actually purchase. So thinking about the calibre you're taking Calibre, I mean, I personally, when, we, when we're travelling round, I opt for you know the easy ones. I either get 308, 306, or 3 in the wind mag. That is universally everybody uses those calibers. Therefore, that's never a problem because that could happen. Or you may lose your ammunition somewhere, or something goes wrong out in the field. Actually, you've got a backstop. You can get some more ammunition. So the quirky calibers. Pff, I mean, even 270 within that. That's quite a quite a universal caliber as well. It's yeah. quite important. But again, massive delay. Couldn't go to where we wanted to go. Had to get someone had to go back to the airport in order to pick up that, that ammunition. You know, again, more paperwork. Now, paperwork. And when we were at a surgeon in Portugal, he was. What was his? What was he saying about? He'd got delayed coming back from Lisbon for three days. Three days. That's right. Um, I think I had some hunters there. They arrived at the airport, and I think it's. We, this is with KLM. So KLM's rules are different to everybody else's, perhaps. But KLM say that the ammunition has to be held separate to the rifle, but it can't go in the in the luggage. So it has to go in its own ammunition kind of box. And I think they had problems with that, um, with, with the actual ammunition side of things, which, which, and I think that, once again, I think the next flight, oh no, this is further on, so therefore they had problems with that, so they, that delayed them because they had to go through security, security, and you can't go through because it's not a separate box, by which time they had actually, they, they, so the KLM reorganised it, 
But then they realised, actually, the connecting fight doesn't take firearms. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're right. So we can't take you to this connecting place because they don't take firearms. So they had to wait in, in, in Portugal for two or three days until they actually found the next flight which will take the firearms. So that is, that is serious stuff, isn't it? That's it's a worst case scenario, though. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the thing is, if you don't want to put people off taking firearms, you've just got to take your time. Well, yes, I mean, on, on the, yes, you've got to take your time. I think, okay, one thing we, we said is allow loads of time. When, when, I, when I, I, I do, I enjoy my holidays as well, well as travelling with you, David, but I, I, my philosophy is actually the, the airport is part of the adventure. <laughs> yes, it's just the a... mindset. <laughs> I've done yoga just for this, just for this. So it's walking to the airport true. is actually true. I sit there, it's like, yeah, just bring it on, yeah, yeah. So, but that's all part of the travelling process for me. So I find, if it means me, you know, arriving four, as I did in, um, in Buenos Aires in Argentina, you know, I was there four hours earlier. And I thought, oh, God, we're waste time. And I just got on the plane. <laughs> so it just shows you. So therefore, it doesn't matter. If it takes time, if you've got time, you are relaxed. You, can, you don't yeah. need to panic about things. Yeah, take it the authorities don't. They don't, don't react. To they don't react to stuff. So they don't react. So they actually, buy yourself time. To, to me, that's the most the thing I've learned o over the years. Is actually just give yourself lots and lots of time. But yes, you talk about paperwork. I've got a list here. I think somewhere, you know, paperwork. I've got passport, EFP, FAC, or shotgun certificates, airline firearms documents, customs customs documents, boarding passes. Make sure your luggage luggage tags are right. That's another thing for me. I'm paranoid about luggage tags because. If that luggage goes without a proper tag, or I haven't got the the tag on my on my passport, you know, or somewhere to make sure I've got that, well, it's the traceable. The, 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 they stick on, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. That's to me. That's that's the traceable that's the bit, goal. right? Yes, yeah. No, I want that. I want that now. So give it to me now. Um, authority to bring firearms into countries. You know, you've got to have that with you as well. Yeah. Um, and also, sometimes some countries you need a sponsor or the outfit at the other end to give you to, to you, they have to sign a form to say you are allowed to go abroad. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, insurance is another thing. So you know, so there's quite a bit there. So you got this. This my 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 got these little documents. And just, these are mine. Do not go near them because I you know I can't allow because they take them away, don't they? Yeah, they do. And they photocopy them. I'm going right. Oh my God, where's, where's my foreign certificate gone? Where's my passport gone? It all goes in different areas. So you got to be so, so that you got to be organised methodical which i'm not but just work your way through it have i got that have i got that have i got that right five minutes guys and i will do that you've seen i've said right shut down <laughs> shut up i'm gonna make sure they're ready right i'm ready to go come on tim is it rage <laughs> i'm not normally out there but i just know <laughs> yeah, yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. <laughs> but we talked about um my experience um coming back in from argentina ammunition i flew out to argentina and ba allowed me to have the ammunition with the rifle Great, saves cost. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought, wow, this is cool. First time ever. Went out there, came came back into Buenos Aires Airport. Yeah, no problems. It's in with the with gun case. So I go into the um, firearms guys. Boom, open it up. Yeah, and this this rather officious lady <coughs> came in. She looked at it all. Yeah, dunk 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 dunk. Um, because the year before, the year before. I decided not to bring the ammunition back in, uh, to, to bring any ammo back to me because it's just easier, right? And they gave me a bollocking, well, sorry, <coughs> they told me off <laughs> because I, took, I went out with 120 rounds and it all gone. How can you shoot for two weeks and shoot 120 rounds? Well, because we did, yeah, right? Yeah. So I thought, oh, it doesn't matter. Last year it wasn't too bad. So I came back. It's expensive ammunition, 300 win mag. So I'll tell you what, I'll keep hold of it. In the, in the, in the, it was in the, ba in the um, um, firearms box. And the woman come along, yeah, yeah, fine. That's not going in there. Right, okay, fine. No problem at all. Um, but unfortunately, my other baggage had gone on the conveyor. It'd gone. It, it's just gone into the ether. And that's another thing is, is that hang on to your luggage. Hang on to absolutely everything until somebody knows what they're talking about. Because you might need that. Extra you may you may need that extra baggage. Otherwise, you've got to find something to put your ammunition into. So the lady said to me, "Yep, yeah, no problem at all. That can't go in." I well, I'm sorry, guys. I can't put it in my luggage because the luggage is gone. So went straight across the other side of the airport. Couldn't find the luggage. Came back again, and she's saying no. And I went, "Ba, I came out with it in my no. Nope. Mm. Were the rules no? Nope. And she wouldn't have it." Mm. So therefore, you can imagine a situation where I had a BA staff running around trying to find a box to put my ammunition in. Ammunition. 
they say that the box, the ammunition needs to be first of all in its original case, as in the, so it can't be loose. So it's got to be in its original case, in the actual ammunition box itself, the cardboard box, whatever it's going to be. And then that ammunition's got to be in a lockable container. Mm. So I sometimes use a Tupperware container or sometimes I use a little metal box because some the proper ammo boxes are quite big and to fit them into a, into a, um, a gun case is quite, is quite a thing. So I've actually got an, uh, a couple of containers. So therefore, be very careful because in some countries, if it's not in the metal case, it's got to be locked. It's got to be lockable. But it has so to be... So you're a, using Tupperware as... I was using... Well, that's, I've used it, it for years. Yes, oh, I just I made holes and stuck a padlock either side. Oh, of it. I see what you mean. Okay, yes, fine. it's lockable. So, <laughs> what, is, well, that, what is lockable? <laughs> what, is, what is lockable? You so, just drop that on the floor yeah, and it'd crack. It could do, I suppose, really, but it, it's, it's quite a sturdy case okay, anyway. Okay. So, so I, I used that, and she said, Well, okay, fine, but it's got to be in a separate bag, it's got to be lockable, which it was. So, the, so BA ran around, found a cardboard box. She said, I've got <laughs> one. I went, Really? And they found this big cardboard box with my small ammo box and chucked in there and, and taped it all up, and they were happy with that. But it's rattling around in this box type of thing. But the point is, if you're coming back, it could be easier and cheaper not to bring the ammunition back with you. Mm. That's the option. Just give it to your outfit and say, help yourself. Okay, if it's specialised stuff, maybe not. But actually, it's a lot cheaper to actually just leave it abroad. But what we're saying is the experience out is not going to replicate the experience back. When I was going to, when I went to Kyrgyzstan with Tomo and Craig and Rob, um, I was feeling pretty poorly on the way home, but in the vague sort of my fuzzy brain, uh, feeling really, really very rotten, um, there was some negotiations because to get through security, the the Kyrgyz guys were taking a fancy to Rob Swarovski scope, <laughs> and it was a case of, um, you know, basically not getting on the plane. Um, but we really like this tube; it's very, very pretty. And Rob's going, "I want that," and we had the fixer shouting from the other side trying to sort of negotiate with the guys that were security guys trying to get us through to our flight because we were about to lose our flight. But yeah, I mean, so it, on the way out, it's very... Can it's be, it's, it's very because we go to some, some exciting places yeah. and the rules are different. And also taking kit with you, you know, it, it, be, I mean, if you take thermal night vision, a lot of countries don't allow it. Yeah. Or they do allow it, but it can't be fixed to the rifle. And people, a place like Argentina, you take all, so we're taking a lot of camera kit out and all that stuff, all these bits and pieces hmm. with us. We take all that with us, but actually in Argentina, that what they would sometimes do is actually check every single thing you've got in. They have to do an inventory. Yeah, inventory, yeah, yeah. because they don't want you to sell it. And when you, and when you come back out, they will check off everything in your, in your bag. It's yeah, like, yeah. really? Because they don't want you to sell it. Yes. So you've got all those things to deal with as well. So it's, once again, the fixer or the outfit or the agent, you've really got to rely on them. Very, very important. Another point is um, when you're picking up your rifle, um, sometimes you might even find it on the carousel. Oh, yes. Yes, where? That's, yes. That's that was interesting, isn't back it? from Inverness? It was Inverness. Oh, yes. Yes, it was, uh, actually it was. Flew into Gatwick, didn't we? Yes. But yes, what should happen in theory is that as, a, as it's a firearm, the handler, which is what you're paying for, picks it up and takes it to the goods to be declared in the customs. And what, and what they do there, they open the rifle up and check the numbers with all the paperwork, say yes, 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 off you go, no problem at all. But sometimes it ends up on the carousel. <laughs> and you just don't mention that to anybody because you've probably got this chap walking around with a trolley saying, where is the fire and where is the fire? Oh, he's over here, clunk. So once again, actually on the other end, um, you arrive at the airport, for instance, like Buenos Aires in, um, in uh, Argentina, I'd turn up, right, I go to chat and say, right, firearms, blank. Fusil, gun, dunk, where, is, where are they? And so it could be either there, there, or on the carousel. You've got no idea. So therefore, once again, you need to make sure you know where to pick them up, because otherwise you spend hours waiting for them. Well, even in, in Lisbon, mm. you know, very modern airport, I was co you went off searching, I cover the carousel, <laughs> just because you just don't know. And then yeah. even when we went to the, through the customs area, you know, they're very abrupt guys, you know, where's, uh, we're looking for the rifle, it'll be here. Yes. When, when it turns up. I think we had to wait, we had to wait an hour, didn't we, I think, yeah. just waiting for this. Yeah. So you went off and sort the hard right. car out, and I waited in customs until these two chaps came walking in with a dunk. Right, okay, fine. Great. So how come every other bit of luggage has taken, yeah. I don't know, 10 minutes to come off the flight and we have to wait an hour for the rifle? That's right. So I think, once again, buy yourself loads and loads of time. But if you've got transfers on their end, whoa, you know, once again, important maybe the fixed agent outfitter gives you some advice on what's, what, what to do or what not to do, perhaps, anyway. Okay. So. I think a key, key point, making sure you haven't got any ammunition 
in your clothing mm, or your bags uh, my or your luggage. My ultimate nightmare. It's just even spent cases. Oh, excuse me. It's, oh, it's, I have nightmares about this. You know, I've got rucksacks going up and down the mountains across the pampas in, in Argentina. You know, when you're in a hotel room or summer's room, just, just take everything out and shake it, shake it, shake it, absolutely everything. And when you've got some older jackets, perhaps, hopefully not new ones, and you get a, 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 um, a round slip through the, through the pocket into, into the actual lining, which has happened before, it's like, for goodness sake. <laughs> so um, what I will do on, you know, fortunately, something like most of the kit I, I, I carry is quite new now because we were sponsored by Harkeela, so therefore I could, but I will actually put that, that, that um, jacket out on a table somewhere and feel, feel it, feel it, because, you know, even this little two, two round or just a shell, it just, it just causes so much problem. So, uh, but yeah. even I've had it. Because I was filming with Terry Tate uh, with Night Sight in America, and he was the big bore air rifle guy, and he was just showing me the various different lead slugs that he has. I mean, they're, they're bullet shaped, but they were massive, huge. But I suppose I should be slightly concerned that I've probably done six international flights with that uh, slug that slipped into the lining of my carry on case. Oh, so gosh. that's a very bullet looking thing. Mm. And I'd gone through, and I think it was somewhere in Scandinavia where they stopped me and asked me why I was carrying bullets. I was like, I haven't got any bullets, <laughs> but, but you know, but I, I get stopped. I mean, if you're carrying, traveling with cameras as well, I get, I would say that 80% of the times I would have my hand luggage taken aside and I have to go through the process of checking out what seems to have reduced the amount of times is the no, number of leads that I have. So if I've got USB cables, if I've got radio mics, that type of thing, if I take the actual cabling out, oh, okay. that, that, tends, that tends to stop it. But it's interesting that the, the, the when we're coming through security at Luton, the guy was interested about what I had in my kit and also the fact that I had walking boots with me or work boots because he thought, he's like, why on earth would the camera have sort of work boots? But, you know, so, yes, uh, easily explained away. One word of advice, never travel with a cameraman <laughs> because I'll spend two or three hours going through my bits with all my firearms and everything else, panicking, panicking, and you go, yeah, I've done it, whoa. Oh my God, we've got David right now. So it's his day, it's his chance. He goes through the customs and everything comes out and you sit there going, right, just how long has this taken? So it's, it's all part of the process. And he got but... lumped in with his titanium hips and that, that causes <laughs> absolute havoc. I mean, that's quite funny because I get to see the rubber gloves coming out for that one, but it's sort of... <laughs> <laughs> but batteries, I had, um, I had lots of rechargeable batteries and, I, and what I tend to do, if I've if I got, got to take a big case with my firearm, what I'm going to do is actually ram as much as I can up to 23 kilograms, might as well. Yeah, yeah. So I've put boots in there, yeah. so I just use as much as I can. This is quite heavy. But what I did is actually have, a, have my recharge on my head torches, I think, in bits and pieces. I had all my, so I have all my batteries together, top, and I put it in there. And they weren't interested in the firearm. They said, what are those batteries there? I said, what is this batteries I'll tell you? Why? Well, I don't want to sound filming, it drags, you know, draws attention. Why well, would we just take them with us? So we've got this, got that. So his batteries are a bit of a no-no. Is it lithium, lithium batteries? Lithium batteries. They yeah. really keep cute on that They're now, starting they? to get more and more, which is a problem, a massive yeah. problem. I mean, most, most cameras will have lithium batteries now, mm. but I take a lot of lithium yeah. batteries. And mm. uh, yeah, so they're supposed to be discharged. And I, you know, again, it's different airlines, but I mean, the lady at, um, at Luton, when we were going to security, said um, you shouldn't have any lithium batteries. It's like, how yeah. has anybody take anything mm. with them? I, I don't see how that... Anyway, that's, that's yeah. a, a world that I'm, you know, I haven't researched an, enough about, really. Um, so, basically, trying to sort of wrap this up, we're talking about plenty of time. We're talking about paperwork. We're talking about be, have a sense of humour, I think, is probably vital. Um, it's... Yeah, do, it, can, do not, it can work really, really easily if you've got oh, someone that knows what they're doing. I think if you, well, I think what, you know, you and I have done a fair bit of it now, and we just know where the problem areas are. Yeah. But we we kind of mitigate that by buying another one or two hours. Yeah. That's how that's how we do it. Because yeah. as long as your paperwork's in order, yeah. then that's the most important thing. So I mean, most people will travel to a country with a, with a VAR and outfitter, perhaps. But if you are on your own, my gosh, just just make sure. Go on the forums, that's what I did, I check people, how do you, you know, if you go to South Africa, it's different to Argentina, or it could be different to Portugal, or Italy's different, I think, as well. They're all, every country's different. You know, moderators, you know, a lot of countries, <laughs> flipping moderators, don't take moderator, you know, okay, you know, that should be obvious to check out, but some countries do, yeah, some yeah, countries yeah, don't. Yeah. Night vision, thermal, you know, a lot of countries, you can't fit it to the rifle, you can use it for spotting. But not fit into the rifle. Yeah. All these things should be are available, but just make sure because that's it's two or three thousand pounds scope or NV 
that goes missing, that's a big mistake, isn't it? It's that's a big mistake. It's, it's, you won't see it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that can yeah. really screw your whole trip, actually. So. Yeah. Um, but as far as this side, how long will it take you to get a European firearms licence? Um, well, we're in Sussex here. Um, Sussex turned mine around very, very quickly, but um, I think Kai actually just had his done as well. They, if you've got FAC, they, the, the, the EFP for them is all part of it, and they would turn it around within the week, perhaps. Okay. But if you, if you are applying for a new one, I mean, very often nowadays, if you've got a, a, having an, a, a, a firearm stuff, you have your renewal or whatever, is the, yeah, the EFP at the moment is not extra charge. So I would just, at the same time, ask them to fill in the uh, European firearms pass. And what that means is all your, uh, all your rifles and your, and your moderators, are, or are actually, or they mirror your FAC more or less. So it gives you a license to go abroad. So that's quite, that's quite a good thing. So uh, just do it there and then if you have to. But if I, if like for us, I'm changing rifles all the time. I just um, send the email through, and they have an they 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 have my EFP. They renew it for me and send it back out because they know obviously I'm travelling a fair bit. So they're very accommodating. You mentioned we were doing this on your Facebook page. Mm. Is there anything that that we haven't covered that was mentioned on that at all? I think most people uh, were just saying that um, is it seems to be the ammunition seems to be causing okay. more problems. Okay. That's, that's where the problems are. So therefore, okay. if it's KLM, BA or, or EasyJet or whoever it's going to be, I think that that's where the slight ambiguity is. And I think you and I know that now. So we sit there and I just have those options available to me. You know, it's in the separate case. If I need to swap it over or take it out, I, have, I can do that. Don't pack everything tight and suddenly, I've been, I think it's in, in, in Gatway once, I went into the customs and had my rifle checked, you know, because they, they, they check it, then they take it away. And they say, yeah, let's have a look at the, the number. I went, right, I'm, I'm in a corridor with about 40 other foreign people, and I actually had to put all my stuff out and open it and physically pick the rifle up amongst all these people with the ammunition and give it to the chap, say, right, 314442, yep, no problem at all, put it back. And I'm going, is that right? Mm. But you need that versatility within, you know, yeah, when you're did packing. Did that concourse as well one time? I think so, yeah, it did. It was, it was really odd. It was like, yeah, fine, crack on. I went, okay. You know, so uh, so I think having that versatility within your luggage to make sure if you need if you can move it because you know I was I was rammed I was had three three twenty three kilogram bags, and suddenly if you got you know the the the, the ammunition I think it's five kilograms or um, that's the maximum weight you can carry, mm. if you if you're taking a big caliber that's not many rounds, yeah. <laughs> so be we be careful on that. So therefore you know if you suddenly got a five kilograms of of ammunition you and you plonk it into your luggage yeah. your luggage is over. 23 kilograms, boof, that's another flipping charge. So think that through a wee bit. So how many, I mean, I know it's a, it depends on what you're hunting, but how many rounds would you normally uh, take? I think that's a really good question, Dave, because, you know, your rifle's gone, uh, it's gone in the airplane, it's been chucked around probably, and you, so you need to check to zero. Everything's absolutely fine when you go to the other end and you say, can I quickly check to zero? And you go, boom, and you go, yeah, that's all right. But I've had situations, I went to France last year, I checked zero and it was out. Right, you know, I've been testing this firearm for ages, make sure it's right, right, right. So therefore, you sometimes, you know, if you're chasing zero a wee bit, if things are being knocked, you may take five or six, maybe ten shots to get the zero right. So therefore, you know, if you're hunting for a week, you may take 20 or 30, but you may knock your rifle again, or you may have two, I mean, we've taken two scopes with us sometimes, two different types of optics, maybe re-zero again. So I think... I mean, I think in Argentina this year, I took 80 rounds. They slightly, they slightly varied a wee bit as to what species I was shooting. So I took 80, and that was plenty. I, I, well, if I shot six or seven beasts... But Has I, anyone I, questioned how many bullets you've ever taken? No, the maximum is five kilo, or whatever it is, five kilograms. But, uh, but I said I had that problem when I came back at, in, into, out of um, Argentina, when the chap said to me, where's all the ammunition gone? You can't have gone through 120 rounds. <laughs> But actually thinking about that, Craig um, Coots, when we went to Kyrgyzstan, he had, they counted all his rounds in, um, and I think he'd been specific and had no 120 or whatever, and he had 118. And we had to go back, we couldn't leave um, Bishkek to, to carry on, we had to come back the following day and go through the rigmarole of just what seemed to be photocopying for no reason, it was just ream and ream and ream of photocopying. And we didn't and understand also, why. Then you had the story of somebody travelling, I think, with 308. And when they learned the ammunition or putting the ammunition together, somehow a 243 yeah. bullet 
yeah. um, 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 round was there as well. So they were, they were checking the ammunition. Two, four, three, what's that doing here? It's not on your list. Mm. Like, mm. So you have to be very, yeah. very careful. So <laughs> you had to be kind of... <laughs> Paul and I were pulled out of a queue. And uh, yes, they were checking the, checking the ammunition. And they didn't tell because it was in foam and they're all the same height. But he clocked that there was a 243 within the 308. <laughs> and it was just like, we thought it was maybe it was because of that, but it wasn't. They, okay. they, they, no, that's right. They picked up a round in his jacket pocket <laughs> in going through the x-ray system that's the other side where all the conveyor belts are and stuff. So uh, it's, there, there, there's a, a few it, it is, it's, little uh, things that can trip you up. I think if you're a home loader as well, if you're a home loader and you take your own you know, um, ammo little boxes type of thing, I don't know, I don't know if that causes problems really because I, I always take the, the manufacturer's yeah, box yeah, with yeah, me yeah. just to make sure that is that, that yeah, is that yeah, type of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's all part of it. So. But as, as long as you treat it as part of the experience... <laughs> that's what I do. And go to, yoga, go to yoga classes. Because <laughs> <laughs> while Brilliant. I sit there, I just, I just chill because you, you, can't, you can't get cross... You can't go. No. I mean, Argentina, I spent three hours sorting my rifles out. I went through the um, customs and everything else. Then went through immigration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went through immigration. I'm going, right. And the chap said, one moment, please, sir. And off he went. And that was it. Didn't see him for three quarters of an hour. All I can see is people going, oh, it's all right. What's going on? And I came back. And he came back again. And all he kept saying to me is, office. Office. What, what's Office. I said, care? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fluid <Office>. then. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> office. Like so I thought, right, what the, what the hell do you want it was? So it's like, and he's chapter, office, office. I thought, right, all I can do is get my permission from the Argentinian consulate from UK with my, with my mugshot in there stating I have permission to come in with a firearm. Well, he's got nothing to do with immigration. But I said, well, that's me. And I think what it was, he just misread one of the stamps in my, in my passport. And I don't think they, they thought I left the country from last year. So they thought I was starting. They were looking at last year's stamps yes. and thought you'd been for and like, all months. I want to say to me is just flick over. He, yeah. wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't. I said, just, you know. No, off you go. So that took me an hour. So I, I got on the plane within about, I had about 25 minutes spare. And I got there four hours earlier. <laughs> So, you know, you've just got to take it. Just come on, bring it on, anything, come on. <laughs> and that's what it is. So, uh, but it can be very frustrating. So, but that's, that's travel. But it's all, in some ways, yes, we do get frustrated, but we are going on an adventure. We're going, you know, we're hunting in different parts of the world. And I think actually the travel is all part of the, uh, yeah. of the trip, really. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we want things now. We want to go through the customs. We want to go there. We want to be on that, tra on that plane and we want to go. Actually, it is part, I mean, sitting down with your beer, having a It's important things. to get it right. We are taking a fire. Well, yeah, it, 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 it is. It's it very serious. As much as we can be sort of flippant about it, we know that it's a chunk of metal without all yes. its component bits, you know. But, you know, for other people, they have to take, because suddenly it becomes their responsibility. Yes, I and think they, you're right. Their, their arse needs to be covered. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's what it is. But in this country, you all have help and they all do what they can. Abroad, you're on your own. <laughs> and you, you very much. Me. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go that's uh that's an interesting topic and seems to be quite confusing on many many levels and it's a good job that we've done a lot of the um i suppose trial and error research for you and i hope that you got something out of there if you're ever thinking about traveling with any firearms or ammunition or anything like that it's probably best my advice is probably not to take some golf clubs instead so anyway thank you once again for you guys you are oh, you are you are the people the people that we do this for and i'm so happy that you are listening to this and if you've got this far then uh it's even more kudos to you super appreciated really really are anyway don't forget to tell that one person or to tweet out your screen share for the chance to win something i'm not going to tell you what it is you're going to have to wait and find out and with that i will leave you in peace so and we look forward to speaking to you again take care see you soon